Hey there, folks. This lesson is going to be super simple. It's all about basic chords for the five string banjo. What does that mean? Well, to me, that means the most common chords, the most common ways to play those chords, and then I'm also going to show you some ways that you can practice them. Now, if we're going to talk about the most common chords, that means some chords are going to be left out, and that's actually a good thing. This is a lesson for beginners. Eventually, you're going to want to learn how to find any chord anywhere on the instrument, but for right now, your best bet is just to work on what's most common, the stuff you're going to see most often, and get good at that. By the way, this lesson is designed for beginners, but if you're looking for even more beginner content, I do have a free 30-day series that'll help you start out from the absolute beginning of five-string banjo. So if any of this is too complicated, feel free to check that out. I'll also leave a link to that in the description of this video. And as much as I do find it helpful to understand the fretboard, understand music theory, that's not the kind of stuff we're gonna focus on today. If I can, I'm gonna to try to keep music theory out of this. There may be some stuff that I talk about that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to you, but rest assured that's just kind of extra information at this point. You really don't need all that to understand how to play these chords and how to use them. But if you do find yourself getting curious about some of the other stuff that I've talked about, or maybe just music theory in general, I'll leave the link in the description of this video to some of my music theory videos. But this video is all about getting straight to the point, so I'm gonna show you a bunch of chords, some major, some minor. I'll share with you a couple ways to play some of these chords, maybe some ways to practice them, and then how you can combine some of these to make an interesting chord progression. First off, we're gonna start with the easiest one of all, G major. And the reason this is the easiest chord on the five string banjo is because it's just all the open strings. That's why we call this open G tuning. All the notes of the open strings create a G chord. That's all you have to do. Now, something worth keeping in mind with all of these is gonna be where the root note is. The root note is just the note that is the name of the chord. So within this chord, there is a G. In this case, there's actually two Gs. But keeping that in mind is gonna be really helpful down the line. So you don't have to know this in order to play the chord, but just keep in mind that in this case, when you play this version of G, the third string, which we have tuned to G in our open G tuning, is G. In this case, the fifth string is also G. So you can think about it that way. It doesn't really change anything about how you play it or anything like that, but in the future, it'll help you understand the fretboard a little better. By the way, folks, if you're looking for a chart with all the information from this lesson, meaning a chart of the chord shapes and some of the examples that I play here, you can find all of that at patreon.com slash Eli Gilbert Banjo. Patreon is where I put all the tablature for all of my lessons, as well as a bunch of bonus content, all kinds of stuff. So it's a great way to get that information, but also a great way to support the work that I'm doing here. So if you check that out, I really appreciate it. I'll put a link in the description of this video where you can go find that. Anyway, back to the lesson. Now, moving on, the next chord I want to talk about is C. Now, none of these chords are going to be quite as easy to play as G, just open strings, but this one's not too bad. You're going to start with your middle finger on the second fret of the fourth string. You're going to put your index finger on the first fret of the second string, and then you're going to put your ring finger on the second fret of the first string. And you're gonna leave the third string open and the fifth string open. And just like our G major chord, it's worth noting where the C is in the C major chord. And that's on the first fret of the second string where your index finger is. Again, not super crucial to know that, but worth taking note of. Okay, moving on, the next chord we're gonna talk about is D major, and that's gonna go like this. This one can be a little tricky, so I'll show you this version and then a slightly simplified version, but it's worth knowing both of them for sure. In this version, we're gonna start with our ring finger on the fourth fret of the fourth string, then our index finger on the second fret of the third string, then our middle finger on the third fret of the second string, and then our little finger, our pinky finger, on the fourth fret of the first string. Now, real quick, something to keep in mind here is that not all of these chords are gonna go well with the fifth string. Generally, and for right now, we're just gonna assume that the fifth string is always gonna be G. And that worked well with certain chords. With G, it's totally fine. With C, it's totally fine. 
But if I play this D chord and then I play the fifth string, it's actually a pretty interesting sound, but it's not really the sound of a D major chord. It kind of clashes with what we're going for with this D major sound. So in general, for right now, you can avoid that fifth string. It's going to be fine if you use it, but just know that it's not technically one of the notes in the D major chord. And there really are no rules in terms of what you can and can't use. Just because it's not technically in the D major chord doesn't mean you're not allowed to use it. But it's just something worth knowing that as far as we categorize these things, certain notes go with certain notes to make certain chords. The G is not part of a D major chord, even though it's kind of a cool sound. Now, if that's a little too challenging right now, or you can't reliably get there, then there is another way you can play this. It's a similar shape. You're just going to remove your ring finger. So it'll go like this instead. Open fourth string, then index on the second fret of the third string, middle finger on the third fret of the second string, and little finger on the fourth fret of the first string. So a very similar shape, but you're just not reaching as far with your ring finger. And it sounds just as good, if not better. And in this case, there are two places where you'll find the D note. In this version of the shape, this open fourth string is D, obviously. But you'll also get it in both shapes on the second string, third fret, that's also D. Okay, moving on is another really common chord on the banjo, but I'll admit this is probably one of the more challenging ones for beginners, but this is a really great way to build up your hand dexterity so that you can do all kinds of other things on the banjo. So it might be a little tricky, but it's absolutely worth the effort. And that chord is F major, and that goes like this. We're going to start with our ring finger on the 3rd fret of the 4th string, followed by our middle finger on the 2nd fret of the 3rd string, followed by our index finger on the 1st fret of the 2nd string, followed by our little finger on the 3rd fret of the 1st string. So after G, C, and D, F is absolutely one of the most common chords you'll see on the banjo, but people do have trouble with it. Kind of similar to D, it has no open strings, except in this case, we don't really have another version of it. This is it. In a lot of situations, people will play just partial chords, meaning not all four strings, and that's totally fine, but for the sake of practice and just understanding what you can do here, it's really worth practicing this full shape. And also, just like the D chord, that open string, which is G, is not technically a note in the F major chord. It sounds pretty interesting, but it's not technically part of the chord. So depending on what sound you're going for, you might want to avoid that note, or if it doesn't really matter to you or you like the sound, go for it and include it. And in this shape, there's actually two places where you can find the root note of the chord F, and that's on the fourth string and on the first string. Both of those are F. Now, after F, there are two more major chords that I think are relatively common, not as common as the previous four, but it's worth knowing them, and they're also super easy. So the first of those is A. And A, as you might have noticed, is super easy because you just use one finger. You're gonna take your index finger, in this case, and you're just gonna press it across all four strings. You call that a bar. Now, one tip that I'll give you for this one that's actually gonna make it even easier to play is that instead of just pressing down directly with your finger, you actually wanna use the side of your finger. So you're gonna rotate just a little bit so that you use the side of your finger. It actually just makes it easier to press down on all the strings. It's a slightly harder surface, not the fleshy part of your finger. And then you're gonna actually be able to get all the notes out pretty easily without having to actually press so hard. Now, as far as the fifth string goes with this chord, when you play it, it actually does something special to the A chord. It changes it from an A major chord to an A dominant seventh chord. Now, if that doesn't mean anything to you, that's totally fine. Another way of looking at it is that it gives it kind of a bluesy sound, which is a pretty cool sound and really useful if you want that specific sound. But if you don't, then it might actually clash with whatever you're trying to do. So keep in mind that that fifth string might not really be helping you get the sound you want. Again, gotta use your ear and decide if that's the sound that you want. And when it comes to the root note of this chord, you'll find that on the third string. That's where the A is. Now onto the next chord, which is just as easy. That'll be B major.
And you guessed it, it's the same as A, but up two frets. So you're all across the fourth fret with your index finger in exactly the same way. You don't have to use just your index finger, it just ends up being the easiest way to play this particular shape. And just like in the A chord, you're gonna find the root note, which in this case is B on the third string. Now this is where things get a little more challenging as far as using the fifth string, which is normally tuned to G. If you play that along with the B chord, you get this, which is a very interesting sound. It's a very cool sound, but it is a little spicy and it doesn't really sound like the chord B major. So I wouldn't really recommend using that if true B major is what you're looking for. But if you like the sound, by all means. And our final major chord before we start getting into some minor chords is going to be E major, which sounds like this. This one starts with the middle finger on the second fret of the fourth string, then the index finger on the first fret of the third string, then we have an open second string, followed by your ring finger on the second fret of the first string. Now, one way you could look at this is that it's actually very similar to the C major chord. The only difference is the placement of the index finger. With a C major chord, our index finger is on the first fret of the second string. And on our E major chord, our index finger is on the first fret of the third string. They sound very different. You would use them in different contexts, but as far as the position goes, they're pretty similar. Now, unlike the C chord, our E major chord does tend to clash with the fifth string as it's usually tuned to G. That sounds like this. Again, it's not a bad sound, it's actually pretty cool. It's kind of bluesy. It's actually pretty similar to what guitarists call the Purple Haze chord that Jimi Hendrix used to play. Very bluesy, it's actually a pretty cool sound. But again, if you're going just for straight E major, then that note is going to clash. So use your ear and decide whether or not that's actually the sound you're going for. And as for the root note of the chord E, you're gonna find that on the fourth string and on the first string. Now we're gonna move on to just a couple minor chords, the ones that I think are the most common, and we're gonna start with E minor. Now, if you remember E major from just a moment ago, you'll find that these are very similar. So with this one, we start with our middle finger on the second fret of the fourth string, then we have an open third string, an open second string, and then our ring finger is gonna go on the second fret of the first string. And just like the E major chord, we're gonna find our root note, that note E, on both the fourth string and the first string. That said, unlike our E major chord, we now have full use of our fifth string because the note G is actually in the E minor chord, so it sounds great. Now, moving on to our next minor chord, we're gonna talk about A minor, and there's two different ways you can play this. Here is the full four note version of the chord. Now you might notice this is similar to our A chord, but we have to shuffle things around a little bit to get the C instead of a C sharp. So we can't really just do it with our index finger and adjust that way, we have to rearrange all the fingers. But it's worth looking at the fact that those are technically similar shapes, even though the order of the finger to go in is very different. But in this case for A minor, we have our middle finger on the second fret of the fourth string, our ring finger on the second fret of the third string, our index finger on the first fret of the second string, and our little finger on the second fret of the first string. Now I wouldn't necessarily say that this is one of the more challenging shapes, although at first it might be, but your fingers are all pretty close together. So other than maybe some overcrowding, it's not too hard to stretch and reach this chord. That said, it's a little cumbersome to get to on the fly. So it's actually really rare to see people use this entire shape. There's nothing wrong with it. It sounds great, but in bluegrass and a lot of other styles, there's a simpler version of this that people play a lot more often. And that goes like this. You're gonna put your middle finger on the second fret of the third string. You put your index finger on the first fret of the second string, and you're gonna put your ring finger on the second fret of the first string. 
and that's it. You're actually gonna ignore the fourth string. You're not gonna play anything on it. And actually, if you do, it kind of messes with the sound of it. So try not to play the fourth string if you're using this shape in particular. This is a reduced version of this chord and doesn't sound quite as full, but it's a lot easier to get to. And in a lot of cases, it's not really the banjo's job to play a nice big full sound. So if you're not specifically going for that, I wouldn't worry about playing all the notes all the time. So in this case, just worry about these three notes and you'll be pretty much set. And when it comes to both of these shapes, you definitely can use the fifth string tuned to G, but it's gonna give you a minor seven sound, which is a great sound but it is a little extra beyond what just a general A minor is. So it's possible that again, that's not quite gonna deliver the sound that you're looking for. So if it sounds kind of off, then you can ignore that string. And also with both of these shapes, you'll find the root note A in the same place, which is on the third string. Now, moving on to the next minor chord, remember when we went from our A major to our B major and it was exactly the same shape? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna do with our A minor moving to B minor. It's the exact same shape, just two frets higher. So in this case, it's gonna be your middle finger on the fourth fret of the fourth string, your ring finger on the fourth fret of the third string, your index finger on the third fret of the second string, and your little finger on the fourth fret of the first string. And just like the A minor chord, the root note B you'll find on the third string. And the same thing applies here in terms of playing that reduced shape. You can play just those top three strings. So that'll be the middle finger on the fourth fret of the third string, index finger on the third fret of the second string, and your ring finger on the fourth fret of the first string. And you can just play those and ignore the other strings. It's also worth mentioning that in this case, that fifth string is going to clash with the B minor sound. It's pretty interesting, but doesn't really capture what we're going for usually when we're playing B minor. So again, use your ear. And now moving on to the final chord I'm gonna show you today, D minor, which goes like this. And the way I'm playing this one is with an open fourth string, followed by your index finger on the second fret of the third string, your ring finger on the third fret of the second string, and then your little finger on the third fret of the first string. And with this one, the root note D is found on the fourth string and also on the second string. And finally, does the fifth string mix well with this chord? Well, in my opinion, it's fine. It's not technically part of a D minor chord, but it's not too inflammatory, it's just fine. So if you like that sound, great, but technically just these four strings are the actual notes in that chord. So those are what I consider to be the most common chords that you need to know, at least in the beginning when you're learning to play the banjo. But how do you practice some of this stuff? How do you put some of this into use? Well, there's a couple main ways to do that. And the first, I just wanna talk about the technique of playing some of these chords. The most common way that people learn these chords is that they learn one finger at a time where they go on the fretboard, and so they practice it that way. They put one finger down at a time, until they have the whole chord and then they strum or they play a pattern, something like that. And that's fine in the beginning, but what we're looking for is to be able to get to these chords really quickly. And you can't really do that if you have this multi-step process where one finger goes down at a time. So do whatever you have to to learn these chords, but one really good way to practice this stuff is to work on specifically putting down all your fingers at the same time. It's not necessarily easy to do, but it is important. So if you wanna be able to do that, here's what I recommend in terms of practicing. Take any one of these chords, it could be something like C, and just do whatever it takes to get all your fingers in the right place. Don't worry about how long it takes, anything like that. Once you've got the shape and everything is sounding good, then I want you to slightly remove all three fingers from the strings, just a tiny, tiny amount, and then put them all the way back down again. Repeat this process so you train yourself to put all these fingers in the same place at the same time, every time. 
When you get more comfortable, you can take your fingers a little further off the strings before you plant them down again. Don't let any of them go down first or linger or anything like that. Just try to get them all down at the same time. This is going to challenge you because your muscles are probably not used to doing this sort of thing, but that's the work that we're actually doing here to be able to do that in the future. The other thing we're thinking about in terms of the technique of this is that for the most part, you want to be using the tips of your fingers, which means you might have to actually curl your fingers quite a bit to get there. What this means is you're less likely to block the other strings. What you don't want is to block one of the strings and have it sound okay on one string and then not okay in the other. So if you're actually able to curl your fingers and play with the fingertips only, then you'll get out of the way of all the other strings so the whole chord can ring out. None of that is necessarily easy in the beginning, especially if this is your first instrument, so don't be discouraged if this takes time. When I was first starting out playing guitar, one of the first instruments I played, I had this same problem, and it lasted quite a while, but it was something that I really worked on, and eventually you don't even think about it. I don't think about at all where my fingers go when I play some of these chords, because I've just done it so many times. The more you do it, the more comfortable you get, the easier it gets, and then you move on without even thinking about it. Now, that's just the technique side of things, but how do you actually use some of these chords? Well. All songs are made up of chords, so one of the easy solutions is find a song you want to play, go on to Google and say chords for insert song title here. When you find those, hopefully they line up with what I've showed you today, you can play them in that order and you'll be playing that song. That's really, really oversimplifying it, but this lesson is not about how to play a song, this is just showing you how to play these chords. But I can show you a little bit of a way to practice some of these things in a way that'll actually sound pretty nice. Again, this is also not a music theory lesson, but what I can tell you is that some of these chords are actually grouped together in what are called keys, and all you need to know is that they sound good together. And different combinations of these chords are in different keys. Some of them are in multiple keys, some of them are not in the same key, but what you can do is put them together in what are called chord progressions, just one chord after another, and it sounds nice. That's what all these songs are made up of. So what you'll find now on the screen and in the chart included on Patreon is a list of some of these progressions. You don't necessarily have to play them in this order, but you can string together these chords in any order as long as they're in the same group and it'll sound pretty nice. So just as an example, one thing you could do is take some of the chords from the key of G and decide to play them in whatever order you like and practice switching between the chords. And that could sound like this. You could go G. E minor, to C, to D, and back to G again. So it actually sounds pretty nice and you're practicing switching between the chords. Then what you want to do is jumble that up so that you can actually switch between different combinations. Going from E minor to C is pretty easy, but maybe going from E minor to D is a little more challenging. So it's up to you to find those challenging switches between chords so that no matter what you come up against, you're familiar with how that change is supposed to happen. And of course, one of the most common ways of playing the five string banjo is with these finger picking patterns or roll patterns as we usually call them. So you can actually apply the same thing just by playing a roll pattern instead. So I'll just take that same progression and apply a finger picking pattern to it that sounds like this. Now, one thing you might have noticed there is that I actually used the fifth string while I was playing the D chord. Again, not the sound of the D major chord, but it actually sounded kind of cool. So again, use your ear, decide whether or not that's what you want, but you'll have to keep in mind the fact that that's technically not part of the chord, neither here nor there, but something worth thinking about. All of that information will be covered in much more detail in future lessons, but for now, if you're not familiar with any of those chords or how to switch between them, then that's a really good bet of what you should be practicing in order to have a really well-rounded understanding of how to play the banjo. Anyway, that's going to do it for this lesson. I hope you found that helpful. Feel free to subscribe to this channel and like this video, all of that stuff. Check out Patreon for chord charts, tablature, bonus content, all kinds of stuff like that. But otherwise, that's going to do it. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.